us today? This is Amy Jenner. Thanks for your company. Joining me now from Melbourne, Liberal Senator Helen Kroger and from Adelaide, Labor MP Steve Georgianis. Thank you both for being here this Easter Monday. Steve Georgianis, I want to go to you first of all. Simon Crean vowing to oppose any move by the government in the budget to tax people's superannuation earnings. What do you make of this? Um, is this just a bit of the fallout, ongoing fallout of the leadership tensions? Good morning, Karen. Look, um, I think uh, there'll be lots of speculation between now and budget time about a whole range of things. Uh, what we know is that we've he heard stories like this about speculation on superannuation and a whole range of, as I said, other things. I'm not going to get into a commentary of what may be in the budget, what may not be in the budget. Um, and all I know is that the only thing on the table right now, the only policy that's on the table, the only cards on the table, are Tony Abbott's uh, a pledge to tax low-income earners of 15% of their superannuation. So people will say all sorts of things and um, make all sorts of speculation about what uh, is coming up, what uh, isn't coming up. We're only in March. There's another two months before the budget is released. And uh, as I said, we can get into commentary, into a running commentary mm -hmm. of a whole range of speculation that's going to take this, place between now and the next okay. two months. This does look like where the government is heading, though. Let's play a little bit of Craig Emerson, the Trade Minister, yesterday on Sky News. There is a legitimate debate about the very top end. That's the fact. There is a legitimate debate. And if we do want to uh, uh, identify sources on an ongoing basis for uh, such programs as the National School Improvement Program, which I think is not a luxury but essential for this country, that debate should be had. Of course, there will be some people in the superannuation industry who I understand have an interest in saying do not touch any aspect of superannuation, even for the fabulously wealthy. So it, it does look like that's where the, the government's heading. Steve Georgianis, are you worried about the politics of this if, if the government does uh, tinker once again with super? Can I just say one thing? Um, we heard Craig Emerson say there is a debate, and there is a debate. There's a debate about a whole range of big picture issues, uh, whether it be superannuation. There's a debate about education. We're having a debate about health. We're having a debate about uh, ensuring that our country remains uh, stable and uh, a good economy. These are debates that political parties have. So, um, as I said, uh, at this point it's speculation. There is nothing on the table. And uh, the only thing that's on the table is that 15 per okay. cent tax on superannuation of low-income earners by Tony Abbott. We know that Tony Abbott is opposed to any change to the, uh, the treatment of super. He was on Viewpoint last night, but he's not vowing to repeal any changes if they do arrive in May. What we can't do is uh, uh, solve all the problems that this bad government has created overnight. There are many things that this government has done that we don't like, but it will take time to repair the damage that this government has done. Senator Kroger, isn't Tony Abbott having a bob each way here, saying he'll oppose it but won't repeal it? Good morning, Karen. Um, uh, bob each way, I think, is, is clearly overstating it. The, the issue is that what we need here is a... Uh, well, we're, we're at a time of renewal. Easter is a time of renewal, and what we need is renewal here in Australia. For Steve, who is a good bloke, decent bloke, Steve, but, but by crikey, I feel sorry for you having to defend the government. It's not a debate the government are having. What they are having, they're besieged by a civil war. And we've seen that again today with Simon Crean's comment saying he would not support a, uh, a grab for the superannuation, the, the cash that so many Australians have have conservatively put aside for their retirement years. It is an absolute disgrace. Julie Gillard is wanting to use it as a cash cow, as her own personal AGM. And I think, Steve, it is well and truly time that we do have a renewal here in Australia. Bring on an election and let Australians decide whether they think this is appropriate way for their hard-earned retirement savings to be used. But don't you think then, Senator Kroger, if that's, if that's the coalition stance that, that Tony Abbott should then vow to unwind any changes if, if you do win in September, as, as uh, so many people expect you will? Well, Karen, ideally we would love to rewind from day one every problem that this government has caused. But, but the reality is that that is just not possible. Every day that they go into further debt is another problem that we will have to, to, to resolve when, we are, when and if we are elected. 
And so I think he is being absolutely right to be conservative and cautious and to say, yes, we do not support this, but we can't fix everything day one. All, All right. credit to him being honest. Let's, I want to um, move on and talk about the issue of gay marriage. His daughters have said that they support um, same-sex marriage, uh, Senator Kroger. I'll, I'll get your thoughts on this in a moment, and then uh, Steve Georgianis as well. But let's play you Tony Abbott responding to this last night. As you can see, they don't mind disagreeing with their dad. Uh, their mother's done a good job in bringing them up to be forthright young women. It is party policy. Uh, coalition party policy that marriage is between a man and a woman. As long as it's party policy, and that's a matter for the party room, there's no conscience vote. Senator Kroger, do you think it should be time for a conscience vote within the, within the Liberal Party? I've got to say, firstly, isn't it great to have young women, independent thinkers like they are, and both Margie and Tony, I think, have done a great job with the girls. We had a vote on this last year. It was a pretty decisive vote before that vote was taken in Parliament. The party room had a very uh, uh, lengthy discussion about the position that we would take. It was determined that it would be a party position and we voted accordingly. I've got to say, I do not think this is the issue that Australians wake up every morning talking about, saying, look, we should legislate for same-sex marriage today. They're more concerned about their retirement savings being used as a cash cow by Julia Gillard than they are about this. Uh, Steve Georgianis, what would you say to that, uh, that this isn't a, an issue of, of uh, daily importance to, to most Australians, but also, I suppose, the reflection there from uh, Senator Kroger that the, the Tony Abbott's daughters do reflect very well on uh, him and his wife? Uh, well, can I just say that, uh, for starters, um, that this was a debate that we had in our party at our last conference. It was determined that we would give our members a conscience vote and a conscience vote we did have in the parliament uh, last year. Uh, what Tony Abbott is doing is denying members who have strong views on this uh, to be able to um, exercise their conscience vote. People like Malcolm Turnbull, for example, or Simon Birmingham in South Australia, who have very strong views uh, on this and are unable to exercise their conscience vote. So that is the stark difference between the two parties. We have a conscience vote allowing our members uh, to vote the way that uh, they feel uh, is important to them. And there's very strong debates on both sides and very strong views on both sides. And uh, as, uh, as Helen said, we had that uh, ballot last year in the parliament um, and there was uh, not enough support for uh, equal rights marriage. But uh, I would urge Tony Abbott to give the same rights to people like uh, Malcolm Turnbull and others uh, who would wish to exercise their conscience vote in their party. We determined that uh, at our conference last year. And, well, Senator Helen Kroger, there are, there are those like Malcolm Turnbull, like Simon Birmingham, like uh, your Melbourne colleague Kelly O'Dwyer as well, that have expressed their support for same-sex marriage. Do you, do you think that uh, Tony Abbott should rethink this Deb, and, and, and take a different view to the election, that you will, ta that you will have a conscience vote? But that, this is the beauty of the Liberal Party, because we are a broad church, as we often say, we are a broad church of views, and those views are respected. In this case, after much discussion, <coughs> it was determined that we would take a party room position, and that's the position that was taken. Um, I, I have to say, it isn't the difference, though, Steve, with great respect between yourselves and the Liberal Party. What we see is that when people actually express their opinions in the Labor Party, they have to resign from their ministerial portfolios and sit on the backbench. So to suggest there's freedom of speech in the Labor Party is uh, a bit of an oxymoron. But you do, still Liberal frontbenchers have to abide by party policy. They would lose their jobs if they cross the floor. Well, that's not the case at all. And, and in fact, history has shown that uh, uh, at, at, at some stages that people have crossed the floor and have not been demonised for it. In the Labor Party, you are not allowed to cross the floor. In the Liberal Party, you can cross the floor. It is a fundamental difference between our two political parties. All right. Um, let's, uh, I want to finish off just on this issue of the, the Emirates Qantas deal. Senator Krogh, you've made some very strong comments in regard to this. You've got concerns. What are they? Well, Mike, I have raised concerns about this quite publicly, about this partnership deal, which has finally been um, signed, sealed and delivered, I think, yesterday between Qantas and Emirates. My concerns in particular go to the heart of what advice 
guidance, warnings, if you like, are being given to people who now have to do a stopover through Dubai, who otherwise would not have uh, had to do that. So with, with the Qantas Emirates deal, it means that every flight stops, uh, has a stopover through Dubai. Dubai has a very judici different judicial system to what we have in Australia. They, as most people understand, they have very different social and cultural mores in, that country, in the country. I have particular concerns for advice or lack thereof for various uh, parts of the Australian community, such as the, the Jewish community. If you have the um, Israel stamped in your passport, there are real concerns there and I don't think that they have been addressed. Likewise, for the gay community, they need to know that homosexuality is illegal in Dubai. You can be arrested and detained and charged and convicted and locked up um, if you are accused of uh, homosexuality. For, for couples not married, they also, that, that is also an offence. Okay. Uh, sex out, out, out of uh, um, marriage is, is an offence and, and all can be locked up. So, so there are a lot of issues here that have to be dealt with. I might add that when I spoke to Qantas about this directly, they did say that people could choose to go through Singapore, which at that time they had a code share arrangement with British Airways. Mm. British Airways have subsequently walked away from that code share arrangement. Okay. Well, that's um, finally, Steve Georgianis, your thoughts on that. We're almost out of time, but quickly. Uh, just very quickly, I think this opens up uh, the world to uh, Qantas as over 52 destinations now that people can fly through. Um, and there are human rights issues all over the world. Uh, um, Qantas uh, flies to China, for example. It flies to Malaysia, Singapore. They all have extremely strict laws. But that's not to say that human rights issues aren't important and we should always be vigilant uh, when it comes to human rights issues all around the world. Labor MP Steve Georgianis and Liberal Senator Helen Kroger, thanks so much. We're out of time. Appreciate it today. My Thank pleasure. you very much, Karen. And that's all for AM Agenda. The news is next.